Hello everyone, welcome and welcome back to my YouTube channel. If this is your first time here, my name is Day Tutu and on my channel I share information about life in Germany, studying in Germany, working in Germany, basically how to thrive in Germany, in Europe also sometimes. So if that is the kind of content that you're interested in, please subscribe, put on the notification bell so that every single time I post a video, you'd be the first to know. <laughs> This video is a continuation of the video I posted, I think, about two weeks ago regarding what I would do differently, knowing what I know now, having lived in Germany for almost a decade. And based on the comments from that video, that the things that I did right should also be something I should talk about. If you've not seen that video, I'm going to link it in the description box below and um, up here on the screen as well so that you can watch it and also leave your comments if you have any right first on my list is the fact that i was always looking for opportunities to expand myself by um, participating in projects offered by the international office or looking for volunteering opportunities i'm going to mention just two that comes to mind right now the first one was me participating in a project that was organized by the international office called the Eurasia project which was a project where we would carry out some research based on the topic we were affiliated with a company in that city and what we did was we would present the topic at the end of the semester to members of staff of this company that helped me to have a deeper understanding of a different topic that was not what I was studying because I think at the time we were looking at human resources in, in, in small and medium sized enterprise, um, enterprises in my city. Something else that also made that, um, <laughs> that project a bit difficult was it had to be presented in German and I was still very fresh in Germany at the time so that was difficult but as a result of working with my team members and also doing my own preparations for the presentation i was able to present in my broken german at the, at the time and that would always be something that i'm always proud of still proud of to now secondly was me applying for a volunteering opportunity at the united nations in bonn i just applied and i got it i was surprised i got it i'm grateful for that and also, I've always heard about United Nations. I've never had any like interactions with United Nations as an organization. And volunteering at the, at the United Nations in Bonn would always, always, always be the highlight of my student life, like my student life, to be honest. It was a nice opportunity. Um, Nigerians were also present at this event. They even won an award. It was a group, it was an NGO um, group. I've forgotten what they were focused on. But yeah, that is one thing I think I did well. And just to also say that you need to actually apply to things like this to give your educational experience a different touch. It's not only all about studying. It's not only all about passing your exams. You should also have a different component to your student life. I think it's important to do something like that, aside from only focusing on studying. As much as studying is important, it's also important to look at other ways to enjoy your life as a student. Those are the things that brought me joy. That's why I did them. So look for things that bring you joy and do them, basically. Second on my list is putting in the efforts to learn German. Um, as much as my German is still currently broken, German is not the best. Perhaps one day I'm going to do a video completely in German. Who knows? Fingers crossed. So far, so good. It can only get better. We only focus on progress here, okay? I ignored negativity a lot. At the time that I came to Germany, there were not a lot of people who had preceded us in Germany, like who had been in Germany for a while, who were perhaps working in corporate or who were, you know, completing internships at the time, at, at the time that I came to Germany and the people that I knew also at my university. So the kind of information you were getting, that I was getting, I think I need to personalize this. The kind of information I was getting at the time was like, for example, you cannot um, graduate in two years or 
if if I want to do something, an example was when I wanted to apply for my Erasmus um, program, they were like, um, they don't give it to Africans, I'm wasting my time. And if I was not someone who wants what they wanted, <laughs> I probably would have been like, okay, um, that is what they said, they've been here for a while, I'll take it to client and sinker and just, you know, forfeit those opportunities. Luckily, and to the glory of God, <laughs> I was able to get an Erasmus scholarship. Even though I did not pursue this scholarship in the sense that I did not go for this scholarship in the said country or the said university, uh, my friend who we applied together was able to go for this scholarship. What does this say? It means that do your research. The requirements are in black and white. There is no back door or anything. If they ask you for a document in German, send a document in German. If they ask you for three copies, send the three copies for goodness sake. There is no special treatment or anything in my experience when it comes to things like Erasmus, scholarships, opportunities at the university. Like, let's be for real. Like, let's be for real. <laughs> so if there is something you want to do, you want to apply for that Erasmus program, whatever the color of your skin, apply to it okay opportunities are there for a reason and even if you don't get that opportunity at least you would know that you tried i can understand that completing your degree in the two years time frame might be difficult for some students why because they're having to work to finance themselves through school totally understandable which is why you need to look at scholarship opportunities apply to as many as you can. If you listen to the conversation I had with Mashrud um, in one of my videos, also going to be in the description box below, where he was talking about working in the, in the energy sector, he had scholarships and he had almost four scholarships throughout the duration of his master's program. So look out for opportunities. Harness these opportunities are really are readily available. Like just apply, basically. Like that's the easiest thing that you can do. Just apply. I was able to know, I knew when to throw in the towel and um, focus on other things that were serving me and ignore things that were not serving me. I'm not going to go too much into details here, <laughs> but um, an example would be, okay, during my master's program, I was tired of the city I was living in. I was tired of my apartment and I was like, okay, um, I want to move out. So I started house apartment hunting, not house hunting. I started apartment hunting and I found an apartment in a different city. Yeah, and I moved there. This city was about one hour away from my university city, but I still moved there and I do not regret it. And this is just one of the things that I did because I just did not like where I was. So I moved, I'm not a three. <laughs> So, basically, what I'm trying to say is if anything is not serving you anymore, if you feel uncomfortable wherever you are, you can move. Okay? You can move. I was betting on myself. I was applying to roles I was not even qualified for. And that is how I came about my first full-time job after my graduation. How did that happen? I think I've talked about how I got my internship during uh, my master's degree. It was as, it was because my friend um, shared this link with me for me to apply for this job. To be honest, I did not want to apply to this job because it was a new job title that I, that I was not familiar with. And I felt like, I don't think I know how to, do, I, like, I would know how to do this job. Forgetting that it was a working student position. They would train you. Okay. Of course, you should have some background, but they will train you. That was how I got into that field. And then when I started doing interviews, I applied to a managerial position. It was not like a top top man, but it was like a manager position. And um, during the course of the interview, it was a first staged interview. They decided to offer me a junior role. Had I not applied to that managerial position, I would not have gotten that job right. Don't focus on the job title, focus on the responsibilities. If you think that you can carry out the responsibilities written in 
a job description, right? Apply for the job. Do not be fixated on the job title. If you're only looking for jobs that have, um, I don't know, controller on it, perhaps you can be a financial analyst. But because you're not looking for jobs as a financial analyst, you're limiting the opportunities that are available to you. And you should not do that. In summary, I think what everything says is that I was craving new experiences because life is an experience. So we should experience life as if we are tourists, you know, experience life like you're a tourist and just take the risks. The worst outcome for every application, any application you send is no. The worst outcome for a risk that you take is that it doesn't turn out well. Bottom line is, bet on yourself. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. We have a good time here. <laughs> I'll see you in my next one. Take care of yourselves.